Hi, I'm Beth. Let's do some needle felting. I really enjoy working with wool uh, in a variety of ways and right now one of my favorite things to do is needle felting. Here are some figures that I have made with this process. This little figure, this little girl, is made with wool and a pipe cleaner. Those are the ingredients, and the reason I used a pipe cleaner was so that I could have arms on her, and they will actually bend and move if you want them to, but I've bent them into this, this position. This little girl is made in the same way. I've just given her a little bit of a different look, gave her a little bun on her head and a little braid and I needle felted a flower across the front of her dress. So these are made in the same way, um, just different styles. This one is also made with wool and a couple of pipe cleaners. I used, again, pipe cleaners for the arms and I also have a pipe cleaner inside the body um, to give myself something to wrap the wool around. You don't need to do that. It, it makes it easier. You can just use wool and shape everything with your hands yourself. But I do find, you know, both ways work, but uh, this one is made with a pipe cleaner. And here is, is one that I have started and I've already wrapped the head in the arms with the wool, but there is, that pipe cleaner extends up through the head on this particular one. And these won't actually be legs. I'm gonna curl them in, and it's just gonna be something for me to wrap my yarn around. It will have a base like this one when I'm done. Just have, I'll just have a dress. Here's another one made in the same way. And that's a little lady holding some flowers. This one, same thing. But I took some felt that I had wet felted and I made her a coat out of that and a kerchief. And I just laid the material on on the body and needle felted that on. There was no sewing involved at all. I just shaped it the way I wanted it and needle felted it. This snowman is all wool. He, I didn't use a pipe cleaner to make him. I just made uh, three balls and needle felted them together and then dressed him up with a scarf and a face and buttons and a hat. This is all wool, nothing else. These are my felting needles. I use four basic sizes. Uh, the ones I tend to use the most are the two in the middle, and those are a size 38 triangle and a 38 star. They are pretty much a multi-purpose size needle um, that work the the best for me on most of the things I do. I will use the one on the right with the light blue top, which is a finer um, gauge needle. That's a 40 gauge triangle um, for fine tuning things, uh, more um, detailed parts of your felting. 
and it leaves less holes in your felting. So it's good for cleanup at the end to kind of smooth things out also. Uh, the needle on the left is a 36 gauge needle and that is, um, it's bigger around. A 36 gauge is not a needle I use a lot. I do use it, but it, it is, it, it's big and it does leave a lot of holes. Um, it's good sometimes for starting a project, I feel, um, when you want the wool to just start shaping together. Um, but if you find it won't poke into the wool, um, it feels like it's stopping, don't use it. I'd move to a finer gauge. Um, so I do use this one very little, but it depends on what kind of felting you're doing. You might use it a lot. Okay, I have a piece of wool of white wool that I'm going to use to start the head on a small figure and we'll make one um, something like this for the purposes of this tutorial. So this is a lot more wool than I need for the head which is what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to pull it apart and I'm going to start with, uh, that might even still be a little bit much. I'm going to pull off some more and I'm going to take this and shape it into a ball. So I'm going to start rolling it and I'm going to fold it in and roll and fold it in and roll, fold it in, roll. Fold it some more, roll. I'm going to take my 36 gauge, that's my large needle, and I'm going to use that first. As long as it actually pokes into the wool, I'm going to use this one, but I will be moving on shortly because it, it will stop going through the wool and I'll need to move to a smaller size. Now don't worry if your ball doesn't look like a ball. Mine never starts out that way. But it will become a ball. The more you poke it, and the more you poke in one spot, flattens it out. So if you have too much of a point on one end, you can shape, poke it down. Right now it looks like this. It's not at all near done, but it's not unraveling. So now I have an opportunity to wrap this loose part over, poke that in. And be careful about your fingers. These needles are very sharp. And I've been poked several times. I seem to be better at not getting poked now. But in the beginning, you will get poked. And the ball is taking on more of a ball shape. But it's very, it, it's not you want it to feel harder in your hands, not so squishy. And so this is, is not done. So I'm going to keep poking. And I'm surprised that my uh, 36 gauge is still poking well into this ball. So I hope I didn't lead you astray with negative comments on the 36 gauge. But doing quite well. It's 
as the ball gets harder it will become harder for you to use this needle and you will need to move to a finer gauge Now this ball is really starting to look like a ball and amazingly I'm still using my 36 gauge and I'm sorry I led you astray on some other pieces I found it hasn't worked as well but uh, this it's working just fine. So, this is a nice ball shape, and it, you could stop here. I would probably, if I was going to stop here, I'd clean it up with a finer gauge. This is my um, 38, triang uh, 38 star, and you, know, you could even take this one. This is your 40, which is very fine and it just uh, smooths things a little so the holes don't show as much. Just uh, this needle is very easy to break because it's so fine so try not to do any bending motions with it when you're in the wool. Um, with all your needles you should go in and out straight up and down. You can poke from the side but come back out the same way. Don't bend your needle. Um, I have broken a few so I've learned that lesson, but this one is, is one that you're going to tend to break out of any of them because it is so delicate. So just some gentle, you're not going to try to stab all the way through the wool with it, you just, your, your barbs are here on the end. So that's what's, what's working the wool, what's grabbing the wool and felting it. Now, if I didn't feel this was big enough, I would take another piece of wool and wrap that around to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to wrap this around. I think I'll pull some of that off. Like that. And let's see how my 36 does. Yeah, that's okay. And that pulls a lot of wool in at once, so it's, it'll be a faster process if I do use my 36. Since it's working so well. And I'm just gonna... So you, you can guide your wool with your needle by pulling it over and then poking it in. Just don't move your needle around after it's in there. So I'm guiding before I poke it in. Convincing my wool I want it over here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just guiding it. Okay, now this is about the size that I want my ball, 
and this is going to be a head. So at this point, I'm going to get ready to incorporate my pipe cleaner for arms. So to do that, um, I want something for that pipe cleaner to grab onto. Um, so I'm going to take some more wool and I'm going to drape a little piece over the top of the ball and then another piece over it again in another direction and a third piece and drape that over and I'm going to just cup that over the head like this and hold it like that can you see? I'm sorry, I'm not putting it in front of the camera. And I'm going to take another piece of wool and I'm going to wrap it around like that. So now I have some loose wool that's going to be able to grab onto my pipe cleaner. So, but I want to secure this a little bit first, so I'm going to poke it. I'm going to move to my 38 triangle, and I'm going to just poke some of this loose wool that I just draped over into the head a little bit, just so it grabs a little. Can you see that? And I want to poke around that neck area where I wrap that around. Make sure that's going to stay. So you don't have to clean this up totally right now around the head, um, but you can if you don't want to see this loose, loose business going on. So I am going to clean that up. Now I'm going to attach a pipe cleaner for her arms. Here is a, a full length pipe cleaner which we won't need because it is way too long for something this size. So I'm going to take one that I've already cut and this even would will be a little bit too long for her arms but that's okay because we're going to actually compensate for that um, in what I'm going to show you next so um, I'm going to take the pipe cleaner like this a little long on this side because I'm going to be wrapping this around around her neck so I'm going to wrap like that And now she has arms. Now these arms um, will actually be shortened up a little bit more later on after when we start wrapping the wool around her arms because we're going to be turning these in on each end like this and again on that side. And if you feel they're not even, um, you could, that's when you can adjust the length when you're wrapping this in. So at this point, um, we're ready to start attaching wool to her arms. Now I'm going to start covering the arms with some wool. So I'm going to take a piece of wool like this. Um, I think I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. I want a little thinner. And I'm going to start covering the end of the arm. So I'm just going to wrap this around this arm like that. And start moving down the arm towards the body.
Now I'm going to hold this wool off like this to the side and bend the arm in because they're actually a little longer than you want them and you also don't want the sharp tip of the pipe cleaner sticking out. So I'm going to fold this in like that and I'm going to continue wrapping the wool. Moving closer to the body. And now that I'm right up against the body, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to take this right up over the top and down the front, this excess wool. And I'm just going to poke that down uh, with my 38 star, just so it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't unwrap. And I'm also going to poke the arm just a little bit, some of the wool. It clings pretty well without poking, but a, a little bit of poking helps. Just by wrapping it, it kind of clings to it, to itself. But this secures it a little better. And just be careful, you have a pipe cleaner running through here and you could break your needle on that if you're not careful. So just kind of some gentle poking. You'll feel it with your needle. Your needle will kind of slip off it. Okay, one arm is covered. Now we'll cover the other arm in the same manner. Okay, so let's try the 36 first. See how that does. I'm not sure I'm liking that. Let's switch to the 38. I think I like that a little better. It might seem like it's not doing anything at first when your wool is like this. It's not wrapped tightly. It's just very loose. I'm going to kind of push this wool. I'm going back to my 36. This does do this well. I'm going to push my wool to the inside and the bottom. The wool I'm pushing inside is ending up here in the body, so it's making it a little, little uh, thicker and giving it a little more shape. Okay, I'm going to wrap some more wool around her. Well, that's not enough. Let's see. Take a big piece like that. Wrap that around her body. And start poking. Start drawing some of this to the inside.
this needle is starting to get hard to poke in. I'm going to switch to a smaller size and that pokes in much easier. This is my 38 star. I'm going to just keep poking her for a little while, keep shaping, bringing in more into the bottom. You eventually, you want this to have kind of the shape of like a dress form going down. Like, oh, she's much bigger. Um, the look of this one, um, but the body is going to be a little longer on this. I am going to shorten it up by poking more on, up into the inside. But uh, um, a better example maybe would be her. This won't be as a big a doll as this one, but this is the general shape I'm trying to work towards. Okay, she is finished as far as her body. I'm going to add the dress now, and what I'm going to start with are her sleeves. So I'm going to take a little bit of some pink roving, and I'm going to pull off about that much, and I'm going to separate it because I don't, for her sleeves, I don't need a lot. I'm going to start with a piece like that. And just like I did when I covered the pipe cleaner, I'm going to start wrapping this around the arm and working my way towards the body. But I'm going to leave the tips uncovered. Those are going to be her hands um, sticking out through the sleeves. So I'm going to start in a little ways and start wrapping the wool. And when I get to the body, I'm just going to lay the remaining piece of wool across her body like that. And I'm going to take a needle, one of my 38s. I think either the star or the triangle would work. I have the triangle in my hand. I'm going to try that first. I just want this to not go anywhere. So I'm needle felting that down. And then I'm going to go over her arms a bit so that this felt will stick to the felt underneath it and it'll be more secure. It won't move around. probably enough. And you can always do more later if you think things look like they need to be tacked down a little better. But I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to put, I'm going to cover the other arm now. Okay, her sleeves are done and I have wrapped that section just kind of around the body and secured it down with the needle on that second arm. So now we're going to cover the rest of the body 
with uh, more of this pink for her dress. So I'm going to take some pink and at this point there's a couple of options and it depends on what my roving is like. Um, some of it clings better without brushing it like I did with the white. That particular roving um, was clingier. I'm not sure how to describe that, but it grabbed itself better. Um, this does pretty well too, um, but I'm going to show you what I do. Sometimes I just wrap it in felt, but I tend to like the looks of this better if I mix the fibers up more. So I'm going to take these paddles and these are actually just dog combs. Uh, brushes and it's a you can buy special things for your wool uh, spinners usually have hand cards that are pretty nice but for my purposes this works just fine and it's a lot cheaper than the hand cards so what I'm gonna do is just load it up with some wool like that just let the teeth grab it Okay, and then I'm going to brush it. And then I'm going to drag it back that way and just kind of drag it back and forth across the brushes, pull it off that one, put it back on, and just really messing up the direction of all these fibers. And then I want it to come off. I just kind of do that and I can pull it right off. Now I'm going to take this and start placing this on her body. I'm going to start at the upper, upper part of her body and put that around here, up over her shoulder, around her neck and start just poking that in. I'm going to see how well my 36 does on this. Now that's, I'm not liking that. It's, it feels like it's not really getting through the, the wool. So I'm going to go back to the finer gauge. Um, this is my 36 star, a uh, 38 star, excuse me. The higher the number, the smaller the needle. So I'm going to continually add more and more fiber to her body until her entire body is covered and the bottom part too. Um, all I want poking out is her head. Okay, at this point, I have her whole body covered and I've made the bottom flat enough so that she will stand freely. And if you find she doesn't and every time you go to stand her up, she tips over, you just need to poke more on the bottom. And the more you poke in one spot, the flatter it will get. And and the same thing all over the body. The more you poke it, the smaller this is going to get. So you can, if you don't like your dress shape, if you feel like it doesn't flare out enough at the bottom, 
um, because you've poked it in too hard and it's kind of really straight. Just add more fiber around, wrap it around, make sure that it kind of blends into the bottom too, just so it has a more even look until you have the flare that you want. So I'm going to stop there. And now at this point, if I want to make this dress more detailed, I can add um, other things to it. Um, like if you wanted to have a her the top of her dress be a different color, you could take another color and just give her make it more, look more like a dress, um, a skirt and a blouse or a vest and leave the arms out. Um, so whatever you'd like to do with that with with color, just the same way you put this on, you would just um, I usually brush this out too. Um, lay that on there in the design that you want as low as you want it to come or you could even make it just a waistband I've done that around her body so I'm going to move on to the hair and keep her as she is and I have some yellow that I'm going to make her blonde that I've already uh, put on the brush I haven't brushed it out yet comb I'm going to get that ready. Okay. So, I'm going to just take a wad of that, put it on top of her head, and with one of the 38s, I'm going to just start poking that into her head so it will start to cling to her head a little bit. And you can make her have long hair, you can make her have short hair, you can put it up in a little bun. I've even attached braids after I had her hair done. I've attached a braid around her head made from the color of her hair and some other colors maybe matching her dress. Um, it's a lot of options. Sometimes I don't decide how she's going to look until I start putting the hair on. I'm going to try my finer needle, my 40. point it's starting to look like a head of hair. It's a little messy but it's starting to take shape. Um, I think I'm going to put more on her up here so that she has more on her forehead. You can also give them a part by poking in the same place. You'll make an indentation if you want her to have a part in her hair, like off to the side. Or you can keep it so there is no part. I think I'm going to I'm going to give her a part right there. Yeah. Now I can choose to just give her some long flowing hair. Um, and I, other times I have taken this and swept it up into a, a bun. Or a, but I think 
I think in this case, the way this is coming out, I want it to be long and flowing. So I'm going to just keep needle felting this. bit of it up and change the length of her hair. And give her long hair but not so long that it's all the way down her back. And I am needle felting her hair right into her body so that it's not something that you can pull off or get caught on, on things. So that way her style will remain the same. It won't change every time you touch her. Well, this is a very basic, but you can be a lot more artistic. But I just want to give you a general idea of how to work with putting hair on her body. Oh, it's just poking. She's too puffy right there. So there she is with hair. Very basic. But there is a lot more you can do to dress her up and make her pretty. It's, it's basically your imagination or um, ideas you get by looking on different websites that do felting. I find Pinterest has a lot of interesting ideas. A lot of talented artists put their work out there and it, it gives you ideas. She's finished. Um, her arms, as you can see, you can pose. She can hold something. Uh, maybe a bouquet of flowers. Or if you're clever enough to needle felt a little cat, that would be cute. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I do have other videos on my channel with uh, wet felting, um, how to make snowmen out of socks and rice. So I do hope you visit.